Shalom, and a warm welcome to the International Online Sunday Service. Thank you so much for being a part of this Sunday session today. Child of God, we must be aware that coming here today and being a part of the program is an opportunity for us to have a paradigm reconstruction. We are presenting ourselves before God in order for us to gain a better understanding of who He is so that we may qualify ourselves for better experiences with Him. Child of God, we must also understand that being here is presenting ourselves before the answers that God has already provided in the form of His voice. We must know that the prophet of God represents the answers to the many prayers that we have prayed. For so long, we have asked God about many issues concerning life and our livelihoods. And if I were you today, I would take this opportunity to put together my journals or my diaries where I write down my prayers and concerns before God. And keenly aware as I begin to listen to the ministration and the word that is coming from the voice of God, identify each of the answers that the Lord has laid bare for me to find. And so today we encourage you to get into that moment of prayer as we always do, preparing ourselves and asking the Holy Spirit to give us greater understanding of what we are about to receive today. Now, if you're wondering, what is this understanding? What is this gentleman talking about? And maybe you might be new. We'd encourage you to head back in time on Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa's Facebook page and find all the teachings pertaining to the two anointings, part one up to three. And today we are hoping <laughs> that it will be part four because we have many questions that we would like to ask the man of God. Thank you for joining us. Are you ready for the service today? If you are, please let us know by uh, clicking on the like button. If you can hear us loud and clear and the vision is pristine, please give us the hard sign. Thank you for being here. Pastor Chikuni. Always good to be here, Pastor Eze. Indeed, indeed. And we are so grateful for what we're receiving from the voice of God. Indeed. And we really feel like it is Him exposing to us and helping us understand the person of the Holy Spirit. He has been a mystery to us for such a long time. And the deeper the man of God goes into these teachings, the more we realize that we don't know him. Neither do we understand him. But our desire to know him and understand him grows deeper and deeper with each teaching that we receive. I think one of the things that I really appreciate about what the voice is teaching us, the teaching priest is teaching us, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa is teaching us, is mm -hmm. the fact that we are heading towards a revival, yes. spiritual and financial. And we are being equipped for that mm. season. Mm. But our understanding, like you said, mm. is being developed. That's right. Through information that the voice is giving us. That's right. Through a level of understanding of the things of the spirit that the voice is giving us. And mm. I was thinking the other day that nearly everybody in the body of Christ assumes that they have an appreciation or an understanding or a deposit of the Holy Spirit within them. Mm. And the voice then comes and says, if you have the person of the Holy Spirit, if you have the personality of the Holy Spirit, yeah. then you can never compete with anybody. Hmm. There's certain sports, even physically, exactly. athletes. If we knew, we wouldn't even be allowed to sit for exams. Exactly. Hmm. But then the point is, with what one is able to manifest in as far as the Holy Spirit is concerned, hmm. and with this understanding, you compare the two mm. that the voice has been giving us. You then begin to realize that we are devoid of information. Mm. We, we, we are in a season where we think we have it, mm. and yet we don't know him. And the unfortunate thing is, like what the voice told last week, it seems like the level of manifestation that we have of the Holy Spirit mm. depends upon our understanding or the information that we have about the Holy Spirit. And God operates with us at that level. Hmm. And it's really unfortunate sometimes hmm. that we begin to think that we are operating at the highest level and yet the Holy Spirit is operating with us at our level. Imagine that. The Holy Spirit operates with us. 
God operates with us. Gives us experiences. Of understanding. Mm-hmm. 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 And that's why it's important that we gather here because we are gaining more understanding. Exactly. Therefore, we are qualifying ourselves for enhanced experiences. Do you remember the example that the man of God gave on Sunday concerning um, churches back in the day mm-hmm. where if you took medication, that Sunday, the prophet would pick you out by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and know that you have taken medication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like you're saying, indeed, the Holy Spirit works with us at our level of understanding. But the principal thing was we need to allow him, allow him to give us more understanding, allow him to explain certain spiritual truths, truths to us even as he is the spirit of truth, to lead us to those truths, even the truths and the logos. It's, it's, it's very unfortunate, Pastor say that after such information has come, you begin to understand certain things in better light. Mm. And imagine coming up with a doctrine because of an experience yeah. that was probably weighed and found to be wanting. <laughs> and you come up with a doctrine, you define a direction mm. and as far as the ministry is concerned. Mm. So it's, 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 it's very dangerous. You have limited the Holy the One Holy of Israel. One. Exactly. When, mm. when, when, when there is such a statement that is coming up and yeah. you are thinking that my experience with an angel mm. is the best there is. Yeah. And yet there's an angel that represents the absence of God. <laughs> I really thank God for the voice. Imagine that. I mean, because our understanding of angels before was that I mean, if you see an angel, that, that is the manifestation of the presence of God. I mean, an angel is a sign of the Lord. I mean, it's a ministry <laughs> spirit. You know, you, you begin to try and qualify the experience. Mm-hmm. And yet, here's a higher level of revelation and understanding. Exactly. That they are angels that can be present in a place. And their only representation is to let you know that God is God not is in not this here. place. Yeah. But here's what's concerning that I think we need to really dig in in terms of wanting to understand from the voice of God, the aspect of being able to discern the absence of the presence of God in a place and to be able to discern the presence of an angel that is there to signify the absence of the presence of God. You know, one of the controversial things that really, I really needed to know and the voice Mm. has taught us I used to wonder, imagine a man of God leads a ministry mm-hmm. and they had a relationship with God, yeah. but now the presence is no longer there. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's an angel there. And you look at the man of God and you see him mm-hmm. do certain things and you're wondering what, how can God you such a person, mm. what is going on? And you, then you begin to understand. You see, that's one thing that I love about the voice. It didn't start by making us try to understand that God operates with us at our level of understanding. He mm. started by explaining the order through which we receive the anointing mm. and what we must go for first. Yeah. And then after that, he then gives you that understanding that qualifies you for the next level. Mm. And you look at the way he then arranged it, mm. even as he was ministering, you realize that it was from one level to the other. Mm. And listening to him at every stage, mm. we, are, we have become better. Yeah. We have become more equipped mm. and we are going somewhere. It's like the teachings are developmental. We are going in a positive direction that really enlightens us in terms of understanding Mm -hmm. how the Holy Spirit operates within a place, Mm -hmm. how the presence of God is made manifest within a place. And you look at ministries where some of funny, some of these funny things have been happening and you thank God for this information. Yes. You really thank God Mm -hmm. for this information because like you said, discernment, Mm -hmm. how do you then learn Mm -hmm. that Yes, the presence of God was here, but the presence of God is no No longer longer here. here. How do you understand that indeed the one that is leading me, Mm. the one that is teaching me scripture, Mm. is operating at a level where maybe I'm even better as a congregant? Mm. 
you need that level of discernment. You mm. need that level of understanding. And you can only position yourself right within any ministry after such a teaching, after understanding these principles. Yes. Without these, then I'm not sure if anybody is equipped to position themselves within mm. any ministry at all. Indeed, this, the question that he answered was extremely complex. And like, like he said, even the perpetrator, the minister himself, who's been subject to or who's been bedeviled by these sins mm -hmm. to an extent that, you know, the voice of God gave an example and he said, now people think it's some sort of part of a ritual activity that is going on. And yet it is a manifestation of the anointing. Mm -hmm. The power. <laughs> giving expression to what has already been in there, which might not be desirable in the first place. Because then you begin to consider the order, like you said, and the arrangement and the sequence in which we've been receiving this information. And I, as a child, begin to feel like I'm being dressed by my father from my inner garments all the way up to what is seen by people. Because when I look at the two anointings, to me, they appear like jackets. The first one being the Holy Spirit, the first jacket that I must wear, mm -hmm. the first anointing that I must be smeared by. Mm -hmm. And upon the Holy Spirit, God then anoints me with the dunamis. The dunamis, as it were, could be another jacket on top of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. An absence of, of that sequencing and in the absence of that order, what is expressed through me, like we learned, are the weaknesses that are inside me. They have better expression. Imagine that. And, and it's the anointing. Ish. You know, it's, it's, it's out of this world. The zeal without understanding is very dangerous. Mm. We, I believe everybody loves the manifestation of God's power. Mm. I believe so. And sometimes we go for the power. Mm. more than the personality of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And yet the voice is coming to redirect us That's right. for our own good yeah. so that the personality of the Holy Spirit may be expressed mm. through us mm. rather than our own personalities, which we know yeah. that maybe the majority of what comes out of us is undesirable, mm. especially in the kingdom. Mm. So we, we are at a position where I think this is a very delicate position where we need to grasp this principle before we enter into the revival. Absolutely. Because you will get the power, mm. but what will be expressed through you? Mm. That's the dangerous thing. Mm. And I encourage somebody that is watching us out there that even as the voice is coming this morning, get your pen and paper, write down, try and understand, mm. give him your all yeah. and make sure that every word, mm. you know, I believe I've, I've, I've studied a bit of communication here and there. And I believe that a certain percentage of what you get, especially from a man of God mm. is not only confined to his voice, but also to his expressions. Mm. So you need to be able to watch and see, and this is an opportunity that you've got. Mm to observe every action by the voice. Yes. That emphasis makes a difference. Mm. That facial expression makes a difference. Mm. So everything that he does, like I sometimes say, everything that the voice does has significance. Yeah. So you need to understand. Mm. You need to make sure that you catch up with his every movement yeah. so that at least your life mm. will never be the same again. As we enter into this revival, you'll be better equipped yes. and have that advantage that qualifies you to be the best in that season. Mm. Indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man of God. Right. We trust and we believe that you're ready. You've checked your connection. You've checked that you are receiving this broadcast loud and clear. Now allow us to get into that special moment once again, where we are receiving life and receiving this word, word that will come and change our reality forever from the voice. Father, we would like to thank you for being here today. We thank you so much for teaching us concerning the person of the Holy Spirit. Father, the more we are going through 
this series of teachings concerning the two anointings. Father, the more we are understanding that uh, we, the reality is we don't know the Holy Spirit, neither do we understand Him. And Father, our deep desire from your teachings is for us to know who He is, for us to be able to commune with Him and to benefit to the maximum level from His presence in our lives. And so, Father, we approach this moment realizing the weight of what you're about to give us and its value. And Father, we are looking forward to the revival that is coming as you are preparing us to better commune and to better fellowship with our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. I appreciate it. Thank you. Once again, I would like to express my joy and gratitude to our viewers that uh, have tuned in and um, we get straight into the Word of God as usual. Indeed, uh, last Sunday, I remember focusing much on uh, the, I think it was the, almost like the last part that the, the part that came at, at the end, which I'd asked you to remind me of, where we had an angel sent by God to go before the children of Israel. Yes. Uh, after God had said, my presence shall not go with you. And I touched on a subject which of course was extremely sensitive given our understanding of angels what they mean and what they represent and only to be told last Sunday that there are those angels that when you see them you are guaranteed of the absence of God and uh, the dangers of failing to discern what the angel of God represents. Mm -hmm. In as much as you may have the angel present, mm -hmm. you still need to discern the presence of God. Because you can have the angel of God and not have the God of the angel. Mm -hmm. And um, I supported that, uh, I would want just to call it an idea. It is an established truth. When I gave you a, a scripture, not in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, because this was soon after Jesus was raised from the dead. That's one. And we had the presence of two angels that were standing at the tomb. Mm -hmm. And those that came searching for Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, failed, they could not find Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they couldn't find him is because he was raised from the dead. And the fact that he was raised from the dead uh, was also the reason why they couldn't find him anymore mm -hmm. in the grave. Mm -hmm. So frankly speaking, you can agree with me that Jesus was now absent. Indeed, Father. Confirmed by what the angels of God said, he is not yeah. here. Yes, so you have the angel of God that is present, but he is telling you that the God that you're searching for is not present. He's not here. Yes, so that confirms that as a very solid truth that in as much as you can have the angel of God, you still have to go further and descend the presence of God. They said he is not here. Yet the angels were there. Mm -hmm. So talk about the, angel, mm. the presence of the angels of God. It was, it was there. Yes. 
but the presence of Jesus. Jesus wasn't there. Mm. Yes, ma'am. So, what were they doing outside of the presence of God? Mm. Uh, I, th I think that's for another time again. <laughs> but uh, they were present where Jesus wasn't. Mm. But if you study that scripture, you realize that at the time these two angels appeared, mm. they were shining. Mm. So glorious. Magnificent. Mm. There was so much light in the place, and yet Jesus wasn't present. Mm. Hence, I promised that I would need more time to share on. Uh, I would I would call it the deceptiveness of of the of the gifts, mm. uh, because. The fact that Jesus wasn't present did not stop the angels from shining. They were shining mm. so gloriously. <laughs> Yet Jesus wasn't present. So you can find yourself in a place like that where the gift is at work, mm. shining so bright. Mm. Yet that is not proof that Jesus is there is present. <laughs> and I said, there are people who are highly gifted and on top of their gifting, they've become so skilled in <laughs> exhibiting the gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit to an extent where you won't have an opportunity after they've demonstrated the power of God to you to further investigate and to want to find out whether God is in a place or not. You don't have any energy left. <laughs> you, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I even used to think that with the prophetic, you, you can't prophesy unless God is present. Because <sighs> I used to think that everything that the prophet is hearing is what God is saying. Until I realized that most of what the prophet can hear is what God would have said. Wow. <sighs> but we have please, 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 can, can, can you? <laughs> would want to hear that again, please. I really was. not planning to spend more time on this today, but just a few minutes and then, and then, and then we call it off. But uh, yes, that's a very, very, very strong area that needs serious consideration. We have to look into that. Because even when God he has departed. There are things that you can still do for God, though without Him. I said the presence of God comes in different forms, mm. and God manifests in different ways mm. to different people. Yes. But the problem with most of the believers or Christians is that that one side of God that God has chosen to reveal himself to them, there is a tendency of thinking that that is all there is to that God. And people try to establish a doctrine mm. over one experience. Hey. Mm. And when they come across another person who has encountered the different dimension of God, mm. there is a fight, there is a conflict. Wow. It will end up sounding as though we are preaching a different mm. God, or three different gods, or five different gods, mm. and yet it is the same God 
with different manifestations to different people. Yes. Again, depending on your level of understanding. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> your level of understanding. The only time that God visits you um, and not really concerned about your knowledge or your understanding is when he's ready to educate you, even to give you a different language that you have never learned before. Wow. Like the way he came at Pentecost and the Holy Spirit made them to speak mm -hmm. in other languages which were not theirs. Mm -hmm. But uh, under normal circumstances, you need information that precedes an experience. If God visits you and he manifests himself before you had knowledge, mm -hmm. then immediately after the experience, you need to consult an informed person who can interpret to you those experiences. Wow. Um, mm. <sighs> I've got so many things to share with you here. Thank you, Father. You see, Let's, let's read that same scripture, Exodus 33. Remember what I said last time? I said the angel that you see in chapter 23 of the book of Exodus is different from the angel mm. that you see in chapter 33. Mm. Two different angels. Yes, sir. If I had time, I would explain to mm. you their difference. Mm. But look at verse number three. Exodus 33, verse number 3. Exodus 33, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm. For I will not go up in the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. For thou art a stiff-necked people, mm. lest I consume thee in the way. So God is saying to his people, Instead of me going with you into the promised land, the land that I've given to your forefathers as a promise, yes, I will have to substitute my presence with an angel that I will send, not the devil, mm. but I will send an angel. Yeah. And when you see that angel arriving, you know, that's me. I've sent him. He is carrying my assignment. Mm. I've told him <laughs> and he has obeyed. Mm. So you have an angel which is not operating in disobedience, but in obedience. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yet he doesn't carry the presence of God. Mm. I will send an angel that will go before you into the land that flows with milk and honey. So the fact that you have seen an angel of God arriving, having been sent by God, it means this angel is an obedient angel. And yet still he is not representing the presence of God. The presence of God. God is saying, I would let, let's 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 keep that in mind. Whichever way, whichever formula that God is implying here or employing here, you are not going to have the presence of God going with the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God cannot say, my presence shall not go with you. And then he gives them an angel with his presence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So... In as much as the angel was obedient, still he wasn't representing the presence of God. 
And I touched on something which is very important. I think it's necessary that we remind the people yes, of that part where God said, he will bring you into the land of the Jebusites, of the Hevites, mm. of the Canaanites. Mm. And then he will help you possess the land. So by that angel, what you will have is the land. Mm. What you will have by reason of that angel is the milk and the honey. Mm. Every material possession you will acquire by reason of the presence of that angel that doesn't represent my, my presence. Mm. Yeah. And then he goes on to say, after Moses had pleaded with him, he said, if you don't go with us, don't let us depart from here. Mm. Until God said, anyway, now my presence shall go with you and mm. I will give you rest. rest. Mm. An important aspect. Mm. With the angel of God that doesn't represent his presence, yes. you get the cash. You get the houses, you get the wells, you get the land, the milk, the honey. Every material blessing that you can think of by reason of the angel that doesn't represent him, you can have those. Ha! But Moses said, unless you go with us, and God said, my presence now shall go with you and I will give you not just the land, not just the money, mm -hmm. not just nice cars, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but while you're driving the car, you will find rest by reason wow. of my presence. Yes. Wow. Having built the most beautiful house, in that house, it is my presence that will give you rest. You see, we have something that is very unique. Yes. This is why this same angel has led many billionaires into wealth that you can never imagine. Whoa. This is the same angel. Billionaires that are not born again are being led by this same angel, angel. which does not represent the presence of God. What they have is money. What they do not have is rest. Because rest can only be created by the presence, not of an angel, but by the presence of God. So in trying to understand, we're talking about the two anointings here. Yes. And the reason why we ended up touching on the presence of God, it is because we have got also two different manifestations of the presence of God. Two different manifestations. Yes, sir. But now, you have read for us a passage of scripture where God is giving them the reason why he is not interested in going with them. Yes, sir. It's amazing. He said, "Ha, huh, because you are a stiff-necked generation, stiff-necked people. If I am to go with you, he said, I will consume you in the way <laughs> I'm going to destroy you in the way. So there is a destructive presence of God, mm. which most people listening to me today are not aware of. Mm. Yet they have been crying for this presence of God. Mm -hmm. When you seek for the presence of God, you have to be very, very careful which one you will find. Mm. There is the presence of God that has to be kept away from you, depending on the flexibility of your neck. Ah, ah. God is saying, because you are so hard to convince, You see, so, so, so we have to now to understand that in as much as God is omnipresent, there is no way that God was going to be absent mm. in the way. Mm. He is supposed to be there. And yet he said, my presence shall not go. So we need to investigate which presence did God chose to 
withhold from his people. Because he's supposed to be present mm. and at the same time be absent. Mm. Mm. Because he's got different manifestations. So he's saying there is a kind of presence that you will have with you on your way into the promised land. But there is another presence that if that presence goes with you, it will consume you. Now we are at a place where something again has to be launched here. Yes, sir. So that people can be educated. I've seen millions of believers wondering why they are in trouble every single day. Suffering every single day tormented every single day. And the anointing of God upon the men of God doesn't seem to deliver them from such afflictions. Mm. Why? Because the anointing of God is never designed by God to cast out another anointing. Especially when it is an anointing that is giving you problems. I would want our viewers to listen to this because it's very important. Yes. The power God has given to us works so well against an opposing force from the kingdom of the devil. <laughs> When you want to use the anointing of God against the anointing of God, it will be so difficult, mm. so hard. Mm. This is why you see it wasn't easy for David to kill Saul mm. because he kept on talking about the anointing, the oil that was upon Saul. Mm. Mm. Even the guy that came and he claimed to have killed Saul. Mm. Mm. He said, how, how dare you touch the anointed, oh mm. Lord. Mm. So because there was anointing upon the life of David, it was hard for David to fight against another anointing. Mm. Why was it so easy for Saul mm. to fight against David, who was also anointed? Because an evil spirit had come upon him. Oh. An evil spirit had now come upon him. And also they were anointed with different oils. The other oil came from a vessel. The other oil came from a horn. Wow. Two different anointings. When you, when you have a superior anointing, you cannot fight another anointing. Mm. When you find yourself <laughs> fighting another anointing you have an inferior anointing that which came from a vessel mm. but when your oil came from a horn mm. when you encounter another anointing you mm. respect it mm. you honor it mm. that's how you know that what you got was the best Wow! the anointing is never the same but look, look at this now. I'm on the issue of the presence of God. Now I'm about to answer the most complicated question. Why is it that Christians are suffering more than drug lords? Why is it prayer is failing to produce financial results? for the intercessors. If God would only give money to those dedicated to him, then missionaries should be the richest people on the earth. True. And yet today terrorists, they have more money mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. Christians. Mm -hmm. Criminals, they have more money. Mm -hmm than Christians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the reason? Is God going to bless his people on the basis of 
his love or he blesses people on the basis of principles mm. 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 is god blessing his people on the basis of love or on the basis of principle mm. if the material blessings of god were going to be according to god's love then christians would have been richer did fall mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. than all the drug cartels that you can think of. Why are the missionaries so poor? Mm. Yet they are fulfilling God's mandate. Mm. They love God and they are loved by God, but why is it that they don't have what it takes even to sustain their ministries? Mm. There is a violation of a certain principle they are going by a certain presence of god hmm. most believers most christians are suffering today because of a certain presence of god Gosh. there is a presence of god <laughs> that will create problems for you ah You must understand that there is a part of God that you must never ask him for unless you are flexible enough. He said because you are a stiff-necked people my presence shall not go with you. If that presence of mine is to go with you while is you are in that state you die in the way mm. so what god is saying here is the only thing that can guarantee your arrival or your longevity is the absence of that presence Hey. Mm. If that presence is present you die early. Mm. Mm. Christians are dying early mm. because of that kind of a presence that has not been investigated mm. by the body of Christ. You want to arrive. He said unless you want to die in the way, but if you want to arrive and enter into the promised land and 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 do businesses and make money there is a kind of presence that i have to withhold from you i don't have to give you that one mm. i want god's children to hear this yes, so finally when you find millions of the children of israel entering into the promised land you have to know that it's because there is a presence that they have left in that place and if that presence was to go with them they wouldn't have arrived now to begin to think that what kind of a presence of god is that that if i'm to receive it today I will soon be buried. I thought every presence of God comes to edify, yes, make me better, yes, improve me. And God is saying because if I am to allow this presence of mine to go with you, we will get to a point where I demand that you make a left turn. and because of this stiffness of your necks you will disagree with me and it is at that time when i want you to take a certain direction and because of your doctrines mm. hey mm. you will start arguing with that anointing with that presence mm. and by reason of that conflict you die in the way mm. you will die in the way I'd rather stay behind 
and then you go you make a move which is good according to your understanding as long as i am present and i'm giving you orders and you disobey that presence will consume you people have asked god for a certain presence of god they know nothing about concerning its maintenance they have been begging god for that kind of presence and when they got the, that presence they don't know how to be led by that presence of god mm. yet they are being consumed in the way mm. this god that you follow my brother can make your life miserable <laughs> mm. this anointing can make you poor mm. this anointing this presence you can be fired your first day at work let me show you something here somebody asked me a question this person was uh working very very close to me in fact i had given him an assignment a position a responsibility in one of my areas and then while he was working there he noticed that there were some challenges that he never used to face in the secular world a very well qualified gentleman mm. yet he was finding simple things to be so difficult and there were so many mistakes so many errors delays and problem after problem and the it seemed like the problems were so systematic very organized the disorder was organized mm. <laughs> <laughs> an orderly disorder mm. then he brought the matter up he said i have noticed that this is the trend why are things happening the way they are happening and i said to him call me in the evening and i'll explain to you what is happening and the reason why i needed him to call me in the evening because i realized that he needed the whole sermon on this particular subject it's not a yes no answer i needed to lay scripture upon another scripture mm. and upon another scripture mm. and bring him to that place of understanding where he begins to appreciate that anointing more than trying to resist it. Mm. 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 And I told him that we have a blessing that we got from God that works like a curse if not properly understood. Mm. Mm. That's the blessing that most Christians have. Mm. It's like a curse. <laughs> you can carry that blessing to a man of God and ask him to cast it out of you. And then he fails. Why because I've told you yes. no anointing can cast another anointing. Yes. It could be an anointing mm. that is making you broke. Let me let me let me explain that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> These anointed men of God that God has sent and ordained failing to deliver Christians from miseries, from poverty. Indeed. Why are these generational cases refusing to break? Mm. Is it the absence of an adequate anointing upon the men of God? Mm. Oh. The anointing that is present upon the men of God is trying to mm. fight another anointing upon a believer. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. So I said to him, let's talk in the, in the evening. Then in the evening, he called me. I said, I'm, I'm, I hope you have time. Because we are about to have a session here. Let me explain to you how this, this question that you have asked me today, you should have asked me the day I appointed you. From the way that you have raised your question, you sound like you have discovered a curse. Mm. You are suspecting that there is the presence of a demon in your dealings. And you want an anointing to come and rescue you and, and, and set, you, set you free. Let me explain to you concerning a blessing that God has given to his people that manifests like a generational case. Mm. Yet it is a generational blessing. Because mm. many people have that question. Men of God, prophet, talk to me. About, why is it that everything I touch dies? There's nothing that I do that works. Mm. Nothing that I start, that I finish. Mm. I've never arrived. I've had nice dreams, good ideas. Mm. But when it comes to implementation, fulfilling my goal, my purpose, it is so hard for me. Deliver me from this case. Yet what he's asking for is deliverance from an anointing by another anointing, ah. which is never going to work because this is why you see, uh, you study your Bible, you will understand that uh, when <laughs> Jacob was invited by his son Joseph in the presence of Pharaoh, what? <laughs> Egypt. Jacob, the Bible says, blessed. <laughs> Who? Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Yes. He blessed him. So there was an anointing placed upon Pharaoh, Pharaoh. which was a bad system, mm. which would enslave his own children. Mm. Hence now, when it was time for God to deliver his people from the same system, he could not just kill Pharaoh, because upon him now was the anointing that God himself could not fight anymore. Mm. So it took Moses days and even months to deliver God's people from an anointing. It was no longer just a case. It was an anointing that was Eesh. holding God's people hostage. An anointing. Aye. So it was difficult for him. Mm. It was hard for him. Why would God kill gods, cattle, and mosquitoes were coming and lies and, and all in darkness and water was turning into blood and, 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 and even the first bones. Why not just kill the Pharaoh? Yes. Because somebody had anointed, somebody had blessed mm. the system. Okay. So it was hard now for an, an anointed Moses to deliver God's people from an anointing. Oof. from the blessing, from the blessing. Hmm. This is probably the reason why your man of God is failing to deliver you from your demon because you don't have any. You have an anointing. You have a blessing. <laughs> oh. Forgive your pastor today. Forgive him. That thing you carry cannot be cast out by an anointing. It is another anointing. You need to be educated on the type of grace, the type of presence that you carry. Mm. Yes. That is helping you fail everywhere you go. You are so anointed. 
You are so annoying. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so now you see something, something is coming up now. That's fine. God is saying, this presence of mine will not go with you because with this presence in your midst, you die in the way. It will consume you. It will eat up everything you have. A destructive presence of God. What kind of an anointing is that? Then I began to teach him. So I would want you people to listen to this. <clears throat> I said, you see, when, when you come close to me, you must understand first the nature, the type, the texture, even the fiber of the blessing that I carry. Okay. This is a superior blessing. Hmm. It is not in monetary form. Hmm. It is not in material form. Hmm. It is in personality form. Hmm. You know, we have the person of the Christ, the person of Jesus. Wow. The ultimate blessing. Hmm. Now, He's not a substandard being. He fights everything he finds around him that is inferior. That's why he calls himself a jealous God. Mm. He tells his people that do not create, do not mold, do not come up with an image of anything, whether of a beast, of a thing in heaven, of a thing on the earth, and then you fall down to worship that, that thing. I don't want you to follow after idols. I'm a jealous God. He fights everything around him that seeks to take over his presence. Mm. Now, now, when God has given you the ultimate blessing, by reason of that blessing, which is Jesus himself, Everything else is added mm. to you. Mm. Everything else follows you. Mm. Seek ye first the kingdom. the kingdom and his righteousness. Yes. And all these things shall be added. 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 The things they come, they come following him. Things will gravitate towards the kingdom that you would have found. Seek ye first the kingdom. And all these things will be added. Because all these things are seeking, also seeking for the same kingdom. And when you have found the kingdom and the things are seeking for the kingdom, then the things will find you. <laughs> because you have found the kingdom. So now, when God has placed a blessing upon you, Pastor. <laughs> ah. I remember, Pastor, some few days ago, let, let's use this as an example. I, I, you just told me that your, your car has, has arrived. Yes, Baba. You bought a car. Yes, congratulations. Baba. Thank you. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. He, he, to, he told me wow. that uh, <laughs> he, <laughs> and when he told me about that car, I told him, yes, the problem that he is going to find. Yes, my father, yes. I told you right. Yes, yes. And at that time, where was the car? It was still in Japan. In Japan. He had mm. ordered it, paid for it, yet to be delivered. And when he announced that to me, I told him of the problem. <sighs> With the car, yes. And he is going to find Then it arrived some few days ago, right? Yes, yes, yes. Then he tells me, 
That's exactly, exactly everything else on the car is super. But that particular area that my father talked about and highlighted, I was I was shocked. I was really shocked. You know, there is a dimension, there is a level of detail that you expect under normal circumstances. And conceiving what he said, you would only appreciate it when you then drive the car and understand what he exactly he said. Then you will realize that, Aish, Aish, it was just too much. Okay, so now, my, my focus here is on the blessing. On the blessing. Do you know that somebody may find it strange that let's say you buy a car and then you're not even able to drive it even for a few days then then you lose your vehicle or some someone might have lost his property his house to a bank for some reasons and then right now they are depressed what really happened had i had the blessing of god upon my life this wouldn't have happened but this is proof that i don't have the blessing of god why am i losing mm. everything why is there something wrong with everything that i have why is there something wrong with every when i talk about everything i mean everything everything there must be something wrong with everything so there is need for people to be taught on how this presence of god we carry behaves Because we have tried for years to cast it out. It's not coming out. Mm -hmm. All the mantles have failed. All the oil has failed because the problem is another oil. It's another anointing. Mm. It is a problem. So now, you must investigate the quality of the blessing that God has placed upon your life. Mm. Which will fight you every time you go for a substandard product. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking, I'm no longer talking about this one now. I'm just trying to help our people who are listening to me today. There, there is a, there is a, This one is a, it's a beautiful car. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice. I'm just talking to some, some of our people listening to me today. He has never arrived on time. Mm. It's a breakdown after another breakdown, whether it's a tire punch or something to do with the engine or something to do with something else. And, and, then, and then given that cycle of delays and breakdowns, Somebody can derive a case out of that mm. and say, this is proof that I don't have the blessing of God. And yet the anointing upon his life for quality things is fighting against every substandard thing. You are found contradicted by your own anointing, delayed by your own grace. Mm. You are in a car where you don't belong according to the measure of grace that God has allocated to you. Yes. That particular vehicle is not allowed. It is not anointed enough by God. It's, it doesn't have that permission to carry an anointed person like you. Mm. So in that case now, you may find yourself in a property and you think that you have bought a house, you think that you have built a house, and yet according to the measure of grace that God has bestowed upon you, that's, that's, you can't open your mouth and call that little thing a house. God will assign banks to come after it so that you are not comforted in a wrong place. Mm. It has to be known that you don't have a house as of now. That's not a house. 
That's not a car. But everything around you that seeks to replace the actual thing will be fought by the actual anointing. The blessing that God has placed upon your life. I'm explaining a mystery to you. Bye, bye. Why are you stuck? God said this presence will consume you <laughs> in the way. Before you even arrive, you'll be consumed by the presence of God. Is the presence of God consuming you? What is that? What is that? I'm answering a question in your life that you have had and you never had a chance to ask that question. And even if you had the chance, you were never going to properly ask that question. Indeed, Father. It's so hard. Indeed, Father. Yet we are faced with difficulties every single moment. And we are wondering, how come God is failing to rescue his people? Mm. Mm. You see, we, we say that maybe before I arrive, let me move in stages. Mm. And, and sometimes we overstay mm. in certain levels until the anointing we carry is provoked mm. by a certain lifestyle that is prolonged. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, mm. Remember God said to Israel, you have stayed for too long in this place. Yes, Jehovah. Huh? Yes, one. yes. He was chasing them from a place because he's saying, according to time, mm. you should have moved from this two-bedroomed house. And God coming to remind his people that you have stayed for too long. And there are people like that. My. Did Jesus not say to his disciples, you spread this gospel and he gave them locations. The roadmap was laid out yes, and they overstayed in Jerusalem. And by reason of that overstaying, God sent persecution. And by reason of that persecution, they were spread abroad everywhere ah. they went. Now they began to spread the gospel. But that persecution appeared like a curse. Yet it was now grace within them, which was now overdue, ready to be delivered. But they were not ready to go to the maternity ward. What is really giving you problems? We have dealt with generational cases. What is left now is an anointing that is attacking you, attacking your children. This presence, he said, it will <laughs> consume you in the way you will not arrive. Don't ask for this presence if you want to arrive. And that's the presence that you have acquired from the Lord. Look at you today. Pastors, am I right on this? Uh, <laughs> it's too much, my friend. It's too, too much. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You see, so, investigate what is this that is happening to me? Is this the devil? Is this God? There is a mystery. There is a part of this God that really calls for an investigation. We have a God that is manifesting to us in a way that is giving us problems. We are not comfortable with that kind of manifestation because I thought if I'm blessed, everything has to flow, flow. It has to flow. Everything has to flow. That is our assumption I don't know who gave us that description of the blessing of God. Mm. And what is bothering us today is not the blessing. It is the definition, the wrong definition of the blessing of God. Oh. 
when somebody has a tire burst and God wants to delay you mm. to get to a certain intersection where you are going to be involved in an accident mm. and you spend the whole month crying over a tire burst because you were not sensitive enough to really understand and extrapolate the meaning of that incident why why oh. why why did that happen to you yet you have the blessing of god when you get to that level of maturity in terms of discernment you begin to declare statements like all things mm. work together for good oh. not some all oh. ah and when you find yourself in a crisis you are not quick to want to exit that crisis before you fully understand the message is embedded within that crisis wow because mm-hmm. there are things that god will send not just people things mm. events mm. that are carriers of information that will be sent by god to educate you mm. Don't try to exit a problem before you fully extract information. <laughs> Because this again could be another angel. Okay. Yes, yes. God has different angels. Even you see I will show you another angel in the Bible again which God said I will send my angel before you. There is another angel in the Bible. That's where God said I will send mm-hmm. that angel before you. and he would destroy the Canaanites mm. and the Jebusites. Mm. Mm. And yet when Israel arrived in the promised land, the Jebusites were still alive. Still alive. The Canaanites were still alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and yet God said, there is an angel that is going before you to destroy. Mm. Mm. But upon arrival you still have giants in the promised land. Mm. So how did that angel destroy the Canaanites mm. if we are still finding them in the promised land then you need to investigate what kind of an angel is that mm. that angel was called fear <laughs> that's the angel that would go before israel that's the same angel that made jericho's gates to be shut mm. and the spies entered and they were told that the reason why the people are terrified it is because we heard of the god of the hebrews mm-hmm. wow how he has delivered his people even from the hands of pharaoh mm-hmm. so the armies in jericho were terrified that's the presence of an angel of terror who had gone way before them to terrify the people and to disarm them of their energy You see when you are in fear you lose strategies. So you must understand that kind of an angel. <laughs> when people are terrified when they hear that you are coming and they are shaking you know an angel. It's a force. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> It's a force. So I'm saying that to 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 remind you that certain things that you see happening in your life they are they have an approval from god things that you see happening in your life that you think this is a case some of those things they are far from cases it's a manifestation of a blessing that you are failing to define properly Father you have given us so much <laughs> Father you have given us so much uh, wow that's the reason why i believe we have to do a very thorough research everything that we got from god has to be investigated it has to be classified it has to be categorized know where this grace you have received from god belong and how it functions mm. so if you ask me as individuals i can tell you your anointing works this way mm. 
your blessing works this way. Your blessing works this way. Your blessing works this way. Don't contradict that blessing by behavior number one, behavior number two, behavior number three. This is how you maintain the blessing by maintaining this kind of a lifestyle. Oh. Oh. You are being fought by the blessing of God. You are being contradicted by the blessing of God. The blessing of God will advise your boss to fire you without a reason. Especially if it is, if the time is up for you to step out of the boat and walk on water. God will create problems for you. The boat will be rocked by the waves. Even in the presence of Jesus, they were shaken. I'm saying, stop, stop right now. Right now, stop trying to exit. Hmm. A situation simply because of pain. Hmm. Stop trying to make efforts. You yeah, stopped try typing. I think he was he was ready. <laughs> <laughs> Child of God, <laughs> you are trying to jump out of a problem before fully understanding the message contained within the problem. Is it really your wife that is a problem? Or she's bringing a problem out of you. Isn't she a platform? Isn't she an anointing that God has placed in your life that brings out whatever was hidden within you? The deceit, the anger, the lies. Ah. Are you sure? that the person close to you is the problem or the person close to you is bringing out the problem mm. out of you. There are people that when they come close to you, it is you that manifest. Yes, there, <laughs> there are people like that. Mm. You are in a crisis right now. You, you sometimes want to come out too early before you are fully cooked. And no one will ever enjoy you as a meal if you are not thoroughly cooked. Mm. That is why Jesus manifested at 30 mm. when he was fully cooked. Mm. And John was in the wilderness until the days of his manifestation. Mm. <laughs> and also there is a problem where you sometimes overstay in a problem. You stay for too long. And then the problem then kills you. You must have an understanding of the times. That's why Daniel said, then I understood by books that the captivity of God's people is supposed to last only for 70 years. But they had gone past that. So according to the prophetic decree, mm. the problem, the calamity, the disease was supposed to last for 70. But look at what the devil was about to do. Prolong the problem. Mm. You can overstay even in a Marriage. Ah. You see? Ah, should I touch that? Yes, please. please. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. You have heard me several times on this. Remember that last time I went, I was ministering prophesying to people, and then I went into the overflow. 
And then I looked at this woman and the eye was dangling. Mm. Remember that woman? Yes. I the did. eye was outside. Yes. yes. It had come out. Mm. I looked at her and said, is this cancer? What is this? And suddenly the Lord gave me a picture, a very violent picture where this woman was being beaten up by the husband. But I did not prophesy that to her. Mm. I asked her a question, what happened? Mm, mm, mm. And she didn't want to speak on the mic, microphone. on the microphone, mm. because she wanted to keep it a secret. Mm, mm. Then when I realized that she wasn't comfortable letting everyone know mm. what had happened to her, then I asked her, away from the mic, and she said, my husband did this to me just yesterday. Mm. I think she went to the hospital mm. and they wanted her to make a report. Yes. She didn't want to report the husband to the police. Yes. And the following day was a Sunday and now she's in church. church. She she still wants to protect. To her, it's a husband. Mm. You see? Mm. 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 To her, it's a husband. <laughs> but if you are to ask me what I had seen in the revelation, what was fighting him? Was it a husband? Was it an animal? What kind of a creature was it? that I'd seen in a revelation. Oh. But to her, this is a husband. To her, she's married to a man. But had she asked the prophet, mm. what did you see that was fighting me that brought out my eye? Mm. Maybe I would have told him, I've seen a baboon or something like that. Who knows? <laughs> who, who, know, who knows? Well, just, <laughs> just. So, so it was going to be easy for her to part ways with such a creature because even sleeping, that, that, that's bestiality. There's something like that, where people, you have people sleeping with animals, right? Mm, yes, yes. Because, you, you see, the reason why she's staying, it is because God hates divorce. divorce. Failure to define the blessing of God you can overstay in a problem. Yeah. The God that hates divorce, he hates divorce when there was marriage. Mm -hmm. Without marriage, there is no divorce. There is a woman that has never known peace. Mm -hmm. You are being beaten by your husband every single day. Mm -hmm. I was watching a certain video of a baby boy, I think four year old. I think that video was doing rounds where the back of that young boy was literally opened up. He was being beaten up by his father every single day, four year mm. old. You look at the back, the father was actually using a wire Mm. I'll look for that video and just sh show it to you, some of you, you see. A grown-up man who is even able to impregnate, he gives birth to a son like that. Mm. This four-year-old is being beaten up. If you look at that picture, you won't be able to eat. Mm. But somebody is calling that person a father. Someone is calling that person a husband. Now, if police had to come in and deliver a four-year-old from a grown-up man who is expected to be reasonable, if police now has the grace to deliver him, how about us men of God? When are we supposed to step in and legitimize a divorce, especially where marriage is not in existence? Because we are sent by God to deliver. Yes. Mm -hmm.
people, not just from demons, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> from mm-hmm. things, mm-hmm. from places, mm-hmm. from animals, creatures, mm-hmm. right? Yes, sir. You see, I'm showing you something here because people are failing to define what the blessing of God is. So she's saying, God hates divorce. It's not just divorce that he hates. How about this beating? Does he like it? No. Mm. Not at all. Because he's thinking, if I separate now, God is going to be angry with me. Who told you that? Mm. You've never been married in the first place. Mm. Mm. That's not God's idea of marriage. Ah. I'm creating problems for myself here. But I want people to understand the meaning of what I'm saying. Yes. Don't lose me. Yes, Don't misunderstand. Don't misquote me. There are people today living together, having children, mm. and yet marriage according to God's definition of it. Yes. It's not there. You overstay in a crisis. The crisis kills you. Mm. You must know when to exit. Mm. And when you exit at the right time, it ceases to be a sin. God will celebrate you. Mm. God will celebrate that move Mm. when it's time for you. But if you depart too early, you are departing from a problem and you are arriving in another problem. Ah. You arrive at the day you depart. From the frying pot to the fire. (laughs) 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 So what am I saying? Mm. I'm teaching you the truth, Mm. which I know is shaking your belief system from Ah. the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Everything within you is being challenged right now. You are wondering, "Ah, come on, what is this now? What is he talking about? Yes, the blessing of God is fighting you. We have to know how to work with it. He said, if this presence of mine goes with you, it will consume you. What is consuming you today? The presence of God. Had you not asked for that presence of God, you would have been better. So what do I do now, prophet, with this presence, now that I I have it already? Flex your neck. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> some people say blessed are the flexible for they shall not break mm. be flexible when you're working with the Holy Spirit be led mm. by him mm. don't contradict him don't oppose him mm. let him lead you let him guide you this blessing is so mysterious mm. I have to show you something a behavior that is divine. Yet, you, if you are not careful, you may try to use your anointing to deliver people from God. Hmm. Yes. As a man of God, you can end up with a whole queue of people lining up getting ready to be delivered from God. If you fail to discern what is giving people problems, people will bring God to you, men of God. People will come and knock at your door early in the morning and make you fight the same God that you are saving. Help us, 
I'm here, men of God, deliver me. And you fast and you lay your hands over them, trying to deliver them from the same God that has called you. Mm. Mm. Descend. Yeah. Descend. What is this? Mm. Can I explain a mystery to yes, you? Please yes, please do. Please do. There is a part of God that is dark. Though God is light. And that part of God that is in form of darkness is what is giving us problems. God is light. Indeed. Read first John one. Five. From verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him. We have heard this message mm -hmm. either from him or of him or concerning him. These people had a message concerning God. Mm -hmm. Now he's about to describe, to give his readership a description of a God that he had concerning. Mm -hmm. And declare unto you. Repeat it again. This, this then mm. is the message which we have heard of mm. him. Mm and declare unto you. You are declaring that same message to you. That God is light. God is what? Light. light. When the Bible says God is light, the Bible is not saying light is God. Okay. Yeah, because... Yes, yes, yes. We have to understand that. Because then if you are found worshipping light, God should not be angry with you. Uh -huh. If light mm -hmm. is God. Mm -hmm. Yes, remember, he, 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 yes, he, he told Israel never even to look up to the sun, even to worship the stars. Mm. Yet these are light bearers. Mm -hmm. yes, the reason why he doesn't want them to worship the light, it is because not every light is God, yet God is what? Light. Is light. Now, so there is a light that is not himself. Hmm. And yet himself is light. Okay. So you need that discerning spirit where you can discern lights. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me show you something here. Mm. So re repeat again. Verse, 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 five, verse 5. This then. This then. Is the message. That's the message now that is coming. Which we have heard. We heard, of him. We heard about that. And declare unto you. Now you are getting it today. Mm. Mm. That God is light. He is light, yes. And in him is no darkness at all. In him, in him, there is no darkness at all. In him. In him, there is no darkness. No darkness. Mm -hmm. So he is light. Mm -hmm. Ah, my God. <laughs> That's the message he got. Whoever told him that, he's honest enough that this is the only seminar I attended where they only discussed about light the light part mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. not the dark. <laughs> Some of you are attending a school that John has never been to. No darkness at all. Now look at Exodus 20. Verse number 23. I want you to see the manifestation of God in that passage of scripture. 20 verse number 23. Found mm -hmm. Father. This, remember again, this was when God came and then he gave the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Writing them. 
on the stones with his finger. Mm. An amazing, a spectacular event that took place. Mm. Not in a vision as millions of Jews were watching. Mm. Read that. Exodus 20, verse number 21. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And the people stood afar off. And the people stood afar off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Moses drew near. And Moses, this was when God had descended. And then Moses, as people were staying away, keeping their distance, then Moses, we see him drawing closer. Mm. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And Moses drew near mm -hmm. unto the thick darkness where God was. Ah. ah, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ah. He, Moses, is drawing near. And he entered into a darkness that was so thick. Mm -hmm. And in there was God, who is light. Mm. How can you have the presence of light in a darkness? And the texture of that darkness remains the same. Mm. It was a very thick darkness, mm. yet within that darkness, God was contained, who is light. Eish. You see, this kind of a manifestation of God was what made the rest of mm. the Hebrew people to stay away. It's an, it's an unfamiliar manifestation of God. If I'm to teach on that mm. manifestation of God, <laughs> the blessing of God that is dark, uh, uh, there is the power of God, the power of God that works in darkness, not in light, in darkness. Mm. What is that? What is that? Not many people are ready to hear. If I'm to present that kind of a teaching today, just like Israel did, they will try to maintain a distance. Mm. Yet some of us, like Moses did, we approached what people were fearing. How can you, because if you are going to have in your prayer closet one of these days while you still are praying and suddenly there is a thick darkness. Ah, my sister, you will rebuke this. This, mm. I, I, I can assure you, <laughs> everything that you, you got from church, you apply it. Mm. Mm. From the Bible and, and the materials. <laughs> we are not ready for this kind of a manifestation, manifestation. of God. Indeed, Father. Mm. Because we have failed to discern a certain darkness that contains God. Hey. Mm. Hey. God has hidden certain mysteries, things that he doesn't want even his own people to find mm. in things that appear to be evil. Ah. Mm. Mm. Not until you are ready to approach the darkness, what most believers fear. That's where some of us are finding God. Like, you see, you can't, you, can't, you can't just come and tell people that uh, <laughs> be careful of that angel that you, that you saw. You can't, you can't tell most of our people today. Mm -mm, no. Mm -mm, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It takes a man who has had an encounter with the actual manifestation of God who can stand like Paul did and said, if even an angel from heaven mm -hmm. comes and preaches another message Contrary. contrary contrary to my message this was paul he said the message that i've delivered my sermon mm. is well patented secured and protected not even an angel can dare 
mm-hmm. mess mm-hmm. around with my message. That's Paul. Mm-hmm. He said, even an angel, he did not say from hell, he said from heaven. He is even telling you that even if that angel comes from God and he contradicts what I've taught you, mm-hmm. let that angel be a curse. He's powerful enough to place a curse over an angel that is coming from heaven to contradict his teaching. You can't say that mm-hmm. unless you have contacted yes. the actual Jesus, the experience, the real experience, the ultimate blessing. Are you following this? Yes, yes, following yes, yes. You, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. No, you can't. Mm-hmm. 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 You can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that unless you have seen something. L- let me show you something here now. So Moses has entered into a thick darkness. That was where God was. How can God, who is light, be found in darkness? And the deliberations that took place, if you if you are going to continue reading, maybe at your own time, it says that and the people of Israel heard God's voice but did not see Him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's repeated again in Deuteronomy. Pastor, you can read for me Deuteronomy chapter number four, chapter four, verse number seven. To verse number 11. And then you go to 1 Kings. Yes, chapter 8. Verse 10 to 12. Deuteronomy 4. Verses 7, 7 to 11. Okay. I will read Deuteronomy 4. Verse number 7. For what nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh unto them? Mm. As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. Uh, I, I, will, I will let you know of something that was discussed some few days ago in a meeting held somewhere. Mm-hmm. Very secret. Where spirits were summoned by God. And, 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 and we discussed something there. I'll talk to you about that at the end, okay? Thank you. Father. Yeah, there is a very, very important instruction. Wow, thank you. That needs to be um, handed over to believers. Okay, continue thank reading. Thank you. Verse number eight. Mm-hmm. And what nation is there so great mm. that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law mm. which I set before you this day. Mm. Only take heed of only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Don't forget what you have seen, yes. And lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Mm. But teach them thy sons and thy son's sons. Mm. Especially the day that thou stoodest. Of all the things that you can teach, remember the day that you stood. Yeah. The day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God Mm. in Horeb. Mm -hmm. When the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together Mm. and I will make them hear my words Mm -hmm. that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth Mm -hmm. and that they may teach their children. Mm -hmm. Verse number 11. And ye came near and stood under the mountain Mm. and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven with darkness, Mm. clouds, and thick darkness. (laughs) Oh my God. First Kings, chapter 8, 10 to 12. From verse 10. And it came to pass, 
when the priests were come out of the holy place, mm -hmm. that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, mm -hmm. so that the priests could not stand to minister. This was at the dedication of the temple mm. by Solomon. Mm. And watch what is about to happen now. When they had brought in the Ark of the Covenant mm. into the most holy place, and suddenly God came to confirm the project. Wow. Uh -huh. And it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, mm. that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. Mm -hmm. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Glory. It was the glory that had defiled mm -hmm. the house, the glory, yes. Mm -hmm. Then spake Solomon, mm -hmm. the Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. <laughs> So the glory that came wasn't shining. Mm -hmm. It was dark glory. Hey. Hey. Dark power. Hey. Dark anointing. The dark blessing. Not evil. I'm saying dark. <laughs> uh, please, please forgive me, please. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and Solomon is telling them that God has shared this information with me. So next time I find darkness and people are running away from it, I walk towards it because he has told me as a secret that I hide in things that people are trying to avoid. Ish. Isn't this interesting? Ah, Father, it's so mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> that was verse number 12. Indeed, Father. Yes. <laughs> Read what David said in 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verses 9 to 12. 2 Samuel 22, 9 to 12. And then you read again, it was repeated in Psalm 18, yes, verses 9 to 11. Psalm 18, yes, 9 to 11. I'll read 2 Samuel 22, verse number 9. Mm -hmm. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils mm -hmm. and fire out of his mouth. This was after, I just enjoy giving some bit of background. This was after David had prayed mm -hmm. against his enemies mm -hmm. that were intimidating him. Mm -hmm. And when he called upon the Lord, he said, God stood up and he breathed. Fire came out of his nostrils. And the coals caught up fire. Mm. Wow. And the heavens began to shake simply because I was in trouble. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes. And fire out of his mouth devoured. Mm. Coals were kindled by it. Mm. He bowed the heavens also mm. and came down. Mm -hmm. And darkness the... was under his feet. And darkness was under his feet. God who is light. Mm. He's saying he came down from heaven, but under his feet was darkness. Can you imagine of the many things that carry God? Darkness is also one of his most trusted vehicles that he uses. Where you have God, if God is coming from heaven and under his feet, there is a layer of darkness, which means even before God touches the ground, what you experience in your life mm. is darkness. And you may try to cast out that one. Like I've told you, if you're not careful, you may try to use the anointing mm. against that kind of darkness. That goes ahead. There is a darkness that foreruns the presence of God. Before the light shines, there is a darkness that prevails. Mm. There was darkness on the face of the earth. God who was light was present, but there was darkness. There was darkness. Until the light spoke, darkness remained. Mm. Darkness was never displaced by the presence of light. But when light spoke, when light said, let there be light. Ah! My God. My God. Mm. 
But under his feet, so him coming down, what I'm going to experience before his arrival is a thick darkness. Then I know he's coming. Soon after that darkness, here comes light. Under his feet. Mm. Can you read it? Let's, let's, let's read one more. Verse number 11. Mm -hmm. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. He was, <laughs> he was riding upon a cherub and did fly. So we know mm. a cherub was there. Mm. Mm. Okay? So this is the whole entourage. Mm. He's being escorted. Mm. Cherubims are there, present, and also under his feet. Mm -hmm. There is darkness, a carpet that is below him. Thick darkness that is bringing him down from heaven. Uh -huh. And he was seen upon the wings of the wind. My God, what a description. Verse number 12. Mm. And he made darkness pavilions around about him. He made darkness pavilions dwelling place mm. these are boots mm. shelter mm. he's accommodated he stays in dark places yet he is light mm. that's why what solomon said was mm. it's, it's, it's something he said he dwells in thick darkness yes. ha. so psalms 18 verse 9 mm -hmm. He bowed the heavens also mm -hmm. and came down. Came down, the same scripture. Mm -hmm. And darkness was under his feet. Mm -hmm. And he rode upon a cherub mm. and did fly. Mm. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. Mm. He made darkness his secret place. Mm. So where God is hiding today from most people, <laughs> places you wouldn't dare attempt to touch where you think you'll find the devil you'll find God you know there's a level of wealth that most believers are not comfortable with mm -hmm. Because they think it's associated with the devil. Our definition of darkness. Dear Father. He has made darkness his secret place. Secret hiding from who? Hiding from who? Imagine if God really wanted you not to have something. And then he knows if I'm to hide in something, I've been known for producing light. Whenever they come, they find this aspect of me. Mm. But there's a part of me that I should make so difficult for people to find. Where do I hide that one? In darkness, where most people wouldn't want mm. to even get close to. Mm. Then he hides in those places. Some of us, when we see that, we approach. Mm. We approach. Mm. Wow. But now, there is an amazing thing now. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 6. Look at what we should have done mm. with the darkness given to us mm. by God. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For God. Mm -hmm who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Who did that? God. God, God who was light, mm. commanded mm. the light to shine mm. out. Shine out. Shine out. Shine out of darkness. When God needed light, he consulted only one place, mm. darkness. It was darkness that produced light. That was the raw material. He was looking for light. The only place where he could find that light was in darkness. Can you do that as a child of God? 
finding light in your darkness? Is there light in your problem? Is there light in that miserable marriage? Is there light that you can... Are you able to command light? How can you command? Because you are the children of light. We are lights. You are, we are the light of the world. Can you... Because you are like your father. You have that power of atomy where you can speak things into existence on his behalf. Can you command light? That thing, that terrible problem that you're facing today, can anything good come out of that problem? Mm. Not from outside. I thought God should have outsourced light mm. and bring the light, introduce light into darkness. No, but out of darkness, he commanded light to shine. What is that? The places that you are avoiding where you think mm. there is no God, that's where God is. <laughs> Read Isaiah 45, verse number 3. <laughs> the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 3. Mm. It reads, And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. <laughs> 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 Mm. <laughs> we can keep on going on and on and, but you see God is not saying here I've given you he's not saying I'm giving you he's saying I will when only when you have heard the message like this mm. thank, you. thank you thank you thank you ah my brother, move around driving your car and you tell people I've, I've gotten this from darkness. <laughs> <laughs> then call me after that. <laughs> Treasures. Mm. Uh -huh. Read it again. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. The treasures. So there is a treasure. Riches that are hidden in darkness. In darkness, mm. places Christians are not ready to visit. Mm. Now, what is happening here is outstanding. You see, I would, I would like you to read Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 18. Mm. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse 18. Verse number 18. Mm. It reads, for ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched. So he's referring to that experience. That experience. <laughs> that mountain. Mm. We read about it. Yes, mm. Father. Mm. In Exodus, we read about it in Deuteronomy. Yes, Father. Now he's repeating now, but he's referring to us now. Mm. That our experience is different from theirs. Mm. In what sense? Mm. Now, listen to something now okay. that he's about to say. And that burned with fire. Mm -hmm. No, unto blackness. Unto blackness or darkness. Uh -huh. So you have not come unto that darkness, you. Mm -hmm. You have not come unto blackness. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have not come to the mountain that burns with fire. Mm -hmm. That can not be touched. Mm -hmm. Or that can be touched physically. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. And darkness mm -hmm. and tempest. Mm -hmm. Verse number 19. And the sound of a trumpet. Mm -hmm. And the voice of words, mm -hmm. which voice they that heard entreated, mm -hmm. that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. You're following that? Mm -hmm. You're following? Repeat it again. Verse number 18. Verse number 18. Mm -hmm. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched. Ye have not come unto the mountain that might be touched. That might be touched. Mm -hmm. So yours. It's not a physical mountain that can be touched physically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Because you're talking about Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is the church now. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And that burned with fire. Mm -hmm. No, unto blackness and darkness mm -hmm. and tempest. 
not unto blackness, not unto darkness or tempest. He's describing what the experience that the children of Israel had. Indeed, Father. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, why then is he telling us that ours is no longer darkness? Because... <laughs> Let me give you a proper definition of the darkness here because we, we, wow. we, that's where we are having confusion. Indeed. You see, when you become the light, when you enter into darkness, that darkness becomes your light. You, you have no opportunity you are deprived of that privilege of assessing or interacting with darkness. All right. Mm -hmm. You never have that chance again of analyzing darkness because at the time of your arrival, Mm -hmm. darkness departs. So he's describing the measure of light that we now carry. Because when Moses approached that darkness, it wasn't darkness that he was approaching. He was approaching the God who is light. Imagine yourself sitting at the center of a problem which is your darkness and you are the light. You may not have an opportunity to analyze your problem, to analyze your your darkness. Especially if you are the light that has arrived Mm -hmm. in a dark place. But darkness, in some sense, you think darkness represents evil. Everywhere you see darkness. Yes, Yes, Father. So if we end there, most people are going to be confused and say, ah, so are you saying God can be God and at the same time be evil? Mm -hmm. But he makes darkness his secret place. There is darkness that represents evil and there is darkness that represents ignorance. And there is darkness that represents obscurity. Okay. When something is obscure, it means that thing in nature is so difficult to comprehend. Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey. Difficult. Not impossible. Difficult. difficult. So God hides sometimes in places which even men of God have failed to identify and even define or even explain or even demystify. And he's hiding in those places. That's the darkness that contains God. An anointing that men of God have not been able to explain. A blessing which works in a strange way. The one that I'm defining to you now. It's a dark area. Mm. Ah. And God has been hiding in a place like that. Why? Not because that darkness is evil. No. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and explained territories. The kind of anointing that people have received that has not been able to be thoroughly articulated by the teachers of the word. Imagine how long we've waited as the body of Christ only to receive that message in this era Uh, that it was all along the blessing of God that we are failing to to interact with mm. that is working against us. The presence of God that God said, if it goes with you, it consumes you. Mm. 
Men of God, we have been suffering, praying against this thing. <clears throat> now treasure, which was hidden in dark places, is coming out. I'm giving people now the treasure. Mm. 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 This is where the treasure is. Mm -hmm. Understand the anointing that you operate under. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Mm. So now, because of the amount of light that we carry, mm -hmm. when we enter into, when we visit the dark place, when we are in there, it's no longer darkness to us. That's what he's saying in the book of Hebrews. Wow. Mm. Wow. It's darkness at the time we are approaching it. But the moment we introduce ourselves in there, it ceases to be darkness because we are light. But this is the place where some people are not ready to venture into. Yet those places, they contain God. God is in those places. It is a secret place. He knows here no one is coming. They are not comfortable with this kind of information. Even after I've said it, like now I've said it, the devil is trying to just make sure that certain people don't understand what I'm saying. He is hiding, God is hiding in dark places. Dark places. Then hmm. because of this teaching, remember I attempted some months ago to deliver a teaching, which I said, if I deliver it today, people are not ready for it. And I'll be in trouble. You remember? But you gave us a tease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, lived with, we lived with a clue, but we were so puzzled. <laughs> what you, yeah. Yes. Mm. And then I just gave an indicator yes, where I said, there is a level of maturity in the things of God where you have to begin to <laughs> be able to <laughs> use demons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to achieve a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it caught a lot of controversy. <laughs> <laughs> Light out of darkness. You can't go into those areas if you're not sure of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. When I begin to explain to people the kind of revival that is coming, hey. I only have to touch on that and prove to people yes, sir. that the anointing you have is not sufficient if all that it does is to cast out demons. It's not enough. There is a greater level. Imagine the demons that we are casting every day. In my presence, they fall, they roll, they scream, they go. Yet in the presence of God, they stand and they get orders. Mm. An evil spirit came, stood before the Lord and said, I will go mm -hmm. and become a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. To think that today, right now, God is hiring demons to do assignments that men of God are failing to achieve, are failing to do. I'll, 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 I'll bring that one back yes, and educate our people. Yes, Father. Not just on how to cast out demons, but how to abuse them. <laughs> wow. Wow. How you can have certain things achieved 
Not by use of an anointing, not by use of a gift. But a demon. Sounds like I enjoy controversy a lot, but I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. <coughs> That's another fire being stoked. I, 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 I enter into darkness and commune with God because I know God is in there. What kind of an anointing have you received? What kind of presence do you carry? Is it not the one consuming you in the way? Are you not being fought? Is your ministry not being opposed by the very anointing that you carry? Let me close by this. You see, most people don't understand how the anointing of God works. Like I've told you before. You know, if you stretch your hands over the sick and they recover, jump out of their sick bed, they're walking again. After many, many years, when people see that, what they think they are seeing is an anointing at work. And I've had people ask me for that same anointing. This man, I've heard them say, this man is anointed. This man is anointed. And yet what they don't realize, what most people, 99% of Christians believe that People are healed by the anointing. Yet there is no anointing that heals the sick. It is the gift of healing. But for the gift of healing, to permeate mm. through the flesh for you to be able to externalize that divine gift that God has placed inside of you there is a need for an anointing to be placed upon you mm. and that healing gift comes out on the strength of the anointing. Hey. And the gift of healing now then heals. You don't prophesy by an anointing. You don't heal the sick by an anointing. Hmm. It is the gift of healing. And when God then comes to anoint you, you just have to make sure, a child of God listening to me, make sure that you have the person of the Holy Spirit first, then the dunamis. Mm -hmm. The power that gives permission to the person to come out of you. Don't start by receiving an anointing before you receive a gift. Mm. Get a gift first because the anointing has to come upon you on the basis of the gift. Mm. Is it possible that a person without a gift can be anointed? Yes. Mm. But what comes out by reason of that anointing is nothing. It magnifies, the anointing magnifies whatever you have. Mm. If what you have is nothing, then nothing gets magnified. Mm. Some of you have come across certain people in life who seem to be anointed for doing nothing. Indeed, mm. Father. Nothing is happening Indeed, around Father. Mm. It's an anointing. I'm just saying, once you have a gift, the anointing comes. God anoints something. That's why he says, 
thou anointest my head with oil mm. there must be a head mm. to be anointed then he says my cup runs over mm. and then i've told you the cup represents your profession yes, mm. your career yes, sir. so when god anoints you mentally you must have a brain mm. have a head mm. and when god anoints that head the manifestation of that anointing will take place at your workplace your business will flourish on the basis of your head being anointed god anoints your head he anoints ideas he anoints your thinking he anoints your understanding and your reasoning so he puts oil on a head that is thinking mm. we are anointing people every day mm. but not much is being done to investigate what is contained in the head the oil is present <laughs> but when god anoints the head if it is the right head you see the cup overflowing mm. the business will begin to flourish mm. Mm. and yet most of the anointing that we apply we apply it on the cup we are anointing businesses hey. instead of anointing the head that runs the business so have something that god can anoint there must be something present mm. so i have the gift to heal the sick and most people have that mm. but theirs cannot come out because they lack the anointing oh wow the anointing is the bridge so it helps me now to flow well mm. when people are getting healed now somebody sees that a man of god and says can i also have the same anointing and then i give him the same anointing and then the anointing now is coming <laughs> to allow what he doesn't have mm. to come out of him mm. Mm. a christian who is not really gifted in terms of work friendship art who is not crafted whose hands have not been trained to war <laughs> mm. and fingers to fight that christian is dangerous if you anoint him mm. <laughs> the little chaos <laughs> when that gets anointed brace word you get a disaster mm. because of that anointing when god doesn't give you the word as a woman and you get an anointing the level of gossip would be so amazing mm. so tremendous people will wonder uh, when you are anointed for the message that you don't have and you are declared a messenger god says from today you are a messenger and you don't have the message and you are being compelled by that anointing to speak <laughs> ah my god don't go for the anointing first <laughs> acquire gifts from god from your neighbor from teachers of the word of god your friends that you interact with mm. at your workplace you are you are conversing with gifts on a daily basis it's in a book no once you have acquired that gift then you say god now i have a head come and anoint me wow wow and when that anointing comes upon you now amazing things will begin to happen I I thought today I was going to touch on the gift giftedness of the gift. Yes, the mm. giftedness of the gift <laughs> and um how you can descend because we have to get to that how to descend the absence of God in a place mm. even if you have a gift at work even if the angel is shining mm. the angel mm. shining <laughs> shining mm. even if the man of god is flying mm. how then can you still discern the absence of god in a church where the gift is shining mm. 
since you have told me that the gift is not proof yeah that the giver of yeah. that gift is present mm-hmm. i thought that's that's what we were going mm-hmm. to deal with today mm-hmm. unfortunately we have to come to that that i have to teach you on how you can discern not just the presence of god but even the absence of god but an issue was raised yes, in a meeting and uh I'm going to send this out. I don't know whether as a plea or maybe as an announcement or maybe it is the blowing of a trumpet. But there is an order which we had and God has given it to the gods. because he wants this thing to be executed mm. and i want every child of god to hear this instruction whether you're a pastor or you're just a member of a church and you don't carry any responsibility as in practical things that can be done in the body of Christ but you carry a responsibility which is spiritual called intercession i'm calling out to intercessors those that have mastered the art of communing with God to begin to pray for a greater measure of the divine healing power of God to manifest after the official launching of the vaccine for covid-19 hmm. am i being heard yes, am i clear on this yes pastor yes father am i clear you are clear father we have had the healing power of god work through us we have seen it we have attested to it hmm. some of you have benefited from that gift but there is a greater measure that we need to acquire now from the presence of god the reason why this issue was raised it was because of the greediness of certain states certain nations and their heads and the reason why this issue was discussed yet we had successfully delivered a message against the issue of vaccine yes sir with regards to covid-19 i'm yes, not against vaccinations mm-hmm. but i said this one is going to be flawed yes, and i stand by my word if there was something wrong with the test kits there would definitely be something wrong with the vaccine Fortunately with the test kit they discovered after using it after having tested certain people but the test is not a treatment that's the fortunate part but the vaccine the discovery will come after the administration mm. of the vaccine 
Mm. And when people are in that state, it will dawn on heads of states that it is too late. An attempt to reverse the aftermath, the outcome, we require the divine healing power mm. of God to sweep across nations. And our issue was, but we have successfully delivered the message. But the problem now was, no one had it. Even if they had it. All it takes, the Lord told us that your message in as much as I have sent you, will still be overpowered by greed. Mm. When your message stands next to greed, mm. your message will not survive. Mm. So, Because of that, I had to find out the truth on the ground, what is happening physically on the ground, you know, because we are dual in our existence. We are coming from a spiritual meeting. We have to find out what is happening physically. And to my greatest amazement, I came across a video some few days ago where one of the richest people on the earth who is on the forefront of this vaccine exercise came out to say a vaccine takes a minimum of five years. He is the man ready to sponsor a vaccine the same vaccine he says in less than five years you can't have a vaccine that is a vaccine it's something else and it the most it can get to actually is 20 years. Yet the ones that have caused problems in the past, had to fulfill that requirement even after five years. The lives have been lost. And now look at the pressure that they've put on the President of the United States of America. What you hear him say now, it is as a result of pressure. Lest he loses his office. He is saying what he knows they want him to say. He has always been against the vaccine. That is why he went on to announce that chloroquine is healing this disease. And after that, look at what they say. They said chloroquine is not safe. It causes heart problems. Yes. You mm. heard that? Mm. Yes, indeed, mm. Father. Mm. After how many years of using it? Oh. That has been our appeal in yeah, Africa. In Africa. Mm. Now because they want to give it to the Americans, they are saying it is a problem. And none of our leaders hears that. Mm. When the one funding the vaccine says it has to take a minimum of five years, 
then if anything is released before five years, they are ready to receive. The level of greed mm. requires that we pray. Why I'm telling you what I heard concerning the healing, it is because the anointing to stop this thing from happening, it could be too late. Hmm. You know, imagine even having the president himself saying that at the end of the year, if you are to have a vaccine at the end of the year, we'll make sure that it is distributed. We are mobilizing our army. I hope what I heard behind his voice will materialize more than the voice that everyone else had. Two voices. When he spoke, when he said that, mm. I hope mm. what I heard, what he said, the other voice behind the voice mm. will materialize. Where what he will release as a vaccine is a treatment. Okay. Not a vaccine. Okay. I pray that he succeeds in that. Because there is a type of vaccine that he doesn't want. Mm. Because he got all the information. Mm. I hope they call a treatment a vaccine. You are praying for a measure, a certain level of the healing power of God. Yes. If you are listening to me, if you are a man of God, be geared up for this. Thank you. God has to distribute this healing power freely upon his people so that we can heal the nations. Leaders are going to make their people sick. <laughs> you must never think that I'm saying this because I'm afraid of anything. I fear to fear. That's why I'm not afraid. Mm. He has not given us the spirit of fear. Imagine what I'm saying. I'm trying to protect my brothers, hmm. my sisters, that cannot even speak for themselves. And yet when they hear me say this, some of them, they don't understand the extent hmm. of the destruction hmm. that is man-made. Which people would deliberately subject themselves to people will fall into the hands of the devil mm. and expect mercy, mercy. There is nothing like grace in the kingdom of the devil. Mm. You won't find it. This thing is a business idea getting ready to be implemented. Mm. And every person on the face of the earth will be forced 
to become a customer, mm. to support few individuals that will get into trillions of dollars. But what happens after that? Do you need to be a scientist to question the credibility of a medication? If you see the author of the medication, the founder, the pharmaceutical companies seeking indemnification, mm. they want to be exempted. Mm. They want to be immune. You can't sue them. Isn't that a red flag? Do you want me to tell you there's something here? Are you, are you telling me that if, if, even if I wasn't going to say this, you were never going to know? Can you accept something in your body, a product? By someone who says, eat this, but don't sue me. You can't sue me. Mm. And then you take that. Are you normal? Are you normal? Are you normal? Any other external product, yes. Mm. Not something that you put into your body. And then they seek protection first, saying whatever happens after, we are not responsible. Mm. And then there's the use of the army. Let's say in the case where you have the vaccine coming out at the end of the year. I don't want anyone in Africa to be angry with me. Because you are not the ones producing this vaccine, so keep quiet. I'm talking to people that you are, you are used to begging. You are used to beg. You beg for money, you beg for this, you beg for... Now you are begging for vaccines. So if I talk about, I'm not attacking your product. That's not your product. I'm against you supporting something that is going to destroy lives. Don't think that I'm afraid of this, like I've said. You know, I know how to protect myself. Mm. Pastors, do you know that I can go to a country today of my choice, carry all my children and become a citizen, remain there forever if I want. Yes, that's true. that's true. And if I'm to receive a vaccine, I may receive a better vaccine. Mm, very true. I'm saying this not for my sake. People with money may not receive this. Whatever is needed is proof that you have been vaccinated. With money, you can still have the proof without a vaccine. Whether it's a certificate. With money, you can have a certificate without a vaccine. We are protecting the poor here. People with money <laughs> can still acquire proof they can come out live being injected with water not with a vaccine we are speaking on behalf of those so this is not for me i'm trying mm. to deliver people from the snare of the fowler there is a trap. So, if we are to seek for God's intervention against the vaccine, we have to be successful. 
if we are not successful, then there is an option now. Now, when we begin to hear God talk about the healing, how necessary the healing power is, it means we are going to be busy. We may not even have time to teach the word for a period of time. Mm. The president of Madagascar, he raised a question and he said, had you people, you developed countries, discovered mm -hmm. this medication? Was it going to be this controversial? Mm. Mm. Which means even if we are to find our own vaccine in Africa, they will not approve it. Mm. They will say, you can only fly around Africa. Mm. We have accepted your own vaccine. Mm. Mm. But they will have a universal one. Mm. Knowing once you have this one, then we know we are safe. But the issue now is, are we going to trust them? Are we going to trust them? Whoever is going to come up with the vaccine, even the Americans, are we going to trust the Americans? Are we going to trust the Chinese? No. 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 Are we? No. No. Father. You can never trust anyone. A man or a country that deprives you of information and other countries are trying to sue them. They had knowledge. They had more than 200 cases before an official announcement mm. was made. Mm. And whoever leaked information concerning that disease was in trouble. Mm -hmm. They knew about it. The leadership that grounded all mm. the local flights. Imagine. Flights from Wuhan to mm. any of Chinese province mm. were stopped. But all the international flights continued from the same place. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. And nothing is wrong with that. This thing was deliberately distributed. Hmm. Hmm. Look at the millions of people that flew hmm. from Wuhan. Hmm. Yet the demon was already at work. The disease was already spreading. Hmm. Hmm. Then after that, they did the quarantining thing, the isolation thing. I don't know whatever happened. And then they said, we have managed. They are now the champions. We are number one. We, we have been able to deal with this thing. And yet there is no official announcement <laughs> on what exactly they used on their patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the vaccine should also originate from the same place. Indeed, Father. If that is the case. <laughs> ah, no. If they are depriving us of information, information, just to blow the trumpet and say, hey, there is something that is coming. Mm. They didn't do that. And we believe they can be our saviors now. No, no, no. Something is wrong with us. So this issue now, like I'm telling you, God told us that bring my people together, let them intercede. Thank you. Place a demand on God's ability to provide 
the healing power. Mm. Imagine pastors where we can have whatever they bring if they force it on you. Mm. Imagine you can have it. And then you come to me. Mm. Can you imagine? Wow. I can have it and come to you. To us that was like hope to say ah we have failed to deal with the level of greediness. Let's go now for the healing power so that we can officially make an announcement. We can't then in the future have our people tortured and harassed mm. for something that we can heal them from. Mm. Mm. It's, 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 it's God's strategy now mm. of setting us free and making sure that there is peace. Peace prevails. There is no any other way once this thing is out. Because once the industries are open, people are going back to work and so on. You know what? They are still going to maintain that people get vaccinated. Why? Because they are saying, what if that shutdown thing comes back again? So no matter we're going to be okay for one year or two years, they will still keep on talking about this experience and say do you want to have that again so let's have our people vaccinated so whoever is going to come up with the vaccine afraid of chloroquine. After how many years? So and their so confidence is in a vaccine that is that requires five years. They are confident that this is the only way out. Tell me of one disease now mm. of all the vaccines available. Do you know until today there has never been proof that all those vaccines have been safe? Not mm. even one proof. Mm. Until mm. today. Mm. Mm. Yes, Father. Yet mm. they still believe that's the solution. solution. So that's the announcement that I have for you. Men of God that are listening to me, I know God uses you in several other areas, but concentrate on this healing power. After, whether it's two years from now or five years from now or ten years from now, when this agenda is being implemented, mm. let us be ready mm. with the healing power of God to heal the nations. Let us be ready. Every believer, every Christian must be ready Thank you. to heal your brother, to heal your friend. Thank you. And by the time this thing enters your body, the anointing will be so much concentrated mm. that you will not have this thing destroy you. We want that level of anointing to work in God's people. Where we see the fulfillment of a declaration by Jesus over his disciples that you will tread upon scorpions and serpents and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So the poison that comes out of a serpent into your body, that's the anointing, that's the power that we're talking about. Where you get injected when that day arrives and they put poison into your body, mm. that's the day the serpent is going to bite you and you will survive that attack. Wow. That's the anointing, which is so practical, tangible. Wow. We will do some sessions here, pastors, where we distribute. Thank you. One day where we have an online international conference. Wow. And we make sure everyone listening mm 
gets a portion, a dose of this anointing that dissolves everything that gets into your body mm. from a serpent or from a scorpion. Yes. He was talking about the vaccines. Mm. Yes. Hmm. Wow. Wow. When that day finally arrives, I can officially make an announcement to all Christians that you are safe. Take whatever they give to you. Let's see what happens. Wow. And we'll start to heal our brothers. The, the power of God will heal us first. Yes. And we'll distribute that healing to our relatives and our friends. Mm. And whatever they want to achieve will not come to pass. That's the announcement. So start praying. Thank you, Father. Start praying from today. From today, when you get an opportunity in the evening, today. Thank you. Start praying. Okay. Who knows? Maybe God will make available that power to you. He doesn't call for you to lay hands on people for you to heal them. A word. He sent forth his word mm -hmm. and healed them. So let's have this opening of the healing power of God, which is coming. So pray. I'm calling out for intercessors to pray, to pray, to pray, to pray mm. for the healing of the nations that the people with money are going to inflict. The people with money are going to inflict pain and diseases on people in the context of prevention. And when the devil begins to destroy and to kill people, and when the pandemic, the actual pandemic starts, when the actual outbreak, like I promise you, that the actual outbreak will start after the vaccine, let us be ready now. We can't trust these people anymore. Let's trust God. Let's, let's trust God. They will stop at nothing as long as they see money. You are not safe. Let's trust God. Let us trust God. Let us trust God. Only God can deliver us from this affliction. And I know that the anointing that we have will work for our own good. Everything will work out for good for those that love the Lord. So I don't think we need to take more time now. Uh, I've been here for too long. I release this special anointing upon your gift. That anything and everything good that God has placed within you that is finding difficulties in finding expression. But now by reason of this anointing that is coming upon your life, yes. let gifts yes. begin to be realized. Let the gift begin to flow. Every limitation be removed. You are protected. You are surrounded. You are covered. In the name of Jesus, against any plan, against any strategy, any idea, whoever wants to make money, by creating problems for you. Mm. In the name of Jesus, we pray that divine judgment will not be prolonged. It will not be delayed. In the name of Jesus, yes. God soon will arise. Mm. He will breathe and fire will come out of his mouth. Yes. And his enemies shall be consumed like wax. In the name of the Lord Jesus, nothing they have planned against you will come to pass. In the name of Jesus, you are covered, child of God. You are protected. We'll take you through now the financial revival yes. and the spiritual revival. Yes. And you'll be so glad mm. that you are alive you. at a time as this. Mm. In the name of Jesus. 
I think you can dismiss the people, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Wow, what, a, what an amazing moment in the presence of God. We received such a marvelous instruction. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you. Let us consider, let us ponder, and let us go ahead and do as we have been instructed by the voice of God. Until we meet again next week. Shalom.